Sunday. I hope everyone is having a good day. It was like full force Otis Summers starting this week. It was raining like every single day. And today so far it is full sun. So I am super pumped about that. Um, Cause the rain makes me sleepy and not want to go anywhere. But the uh, sunshine is picking up my spirits a little bit. So. Today, I am super excited because Morgan Avery is going to be joining us and teaching us how to make her almond curry bootable. So let me accept her in real quick. Hi. There we go. <laughs> how are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. All right, let's see if I can set this thing up. Okay. Continue on. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying how this week it's been like full force Florida summer downpouring like every single day. And it's actually sunny today, which makes me a little bit more energized and excited. So um, bring a little sunshine into my day, which is not a bad thing. Um, so I was just telling everyone that we were going to make your delicious almond curry bootable. And you know what? When you sent this recipe over um, originally, I thought, oh, my gosh, that is just like this salad that my dad always gets at this one cafe here in Orlando. And it's like the weirdest combination of ingredients. But it's a curry, dressing, bananas, chicken, raisins. <laughs> But it's good. Like, it's surprisingly delicious. And I thought that Buddha Bowl is going to be so similar to that. So I am pumped to have leftovers for the rest of the week. Same. Same. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, um, banana, though? I need to hear more. The banana part? What? I don't know. It just works. Something with, like, the soft texture and then the crunch from the romaine, it, it sounds crazy weird, but I promise you, it, it's not that bad. Um, but I wonder how many people order it with the bananas on the salad, because it is kind of strange. <laughs> no, I like weird stuff, and I'm sure you probably have done the same thing where you put a bunch of random stuff together, and then it actually is amazing, and like, okay, bananas and salad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I haven't done that one yet, but I might now. Actually, my dad takes lettuce and then peanut butter and banana and rolls it up and eats it. And he, like, swears by it. He loves it. There you go. That's so funny. Um, okay, so I know that some people are in here with us live. And um, I want to know, for those of you who are in live, I want to know if any of you are going to be cooking along with us. I have actually never this recipe before so Morgan is going to be walking me through it as well so you guys can kind of follow what both of us are doing and um, so if you're cooking with us just like send us a wave tell us you know that you're um, cooking along and then for those of you who are watching this later the video will be up for 24 hours so you can cook with us at any time for your Sunday meal prep um, so let's go ahead and get started. So real quick, um, just wanted to introduce Morgan. So we have actually never met in person, but I feel like I know you so well because we've yeah. FaceTimed and follow each other on Instagram. And we do such similar things for our jobs, which I love. So it's been so great to have a sounding board to bounce ideas off of um and so morgan i'll let you kind of tell a little bit more about who you are and um so yeah this is part of the collective series that i launched on my blog about a month ago really just to create a platform to be able to support and highlight other female business owners in the health and wellness space that i thought were doing such an amazing job and um, I've always wanted to create my brand beyond just me. So this was a way to kind of create a team around myself because it can be kind of lonely when you're a solopreneur and in it um, by yourself a lot of times. So it's been super fun so far and we've had some amazing stuff and I am so excited for today. So 
I am going to stop talking and kind of let you take it from here and just introduce yourself and um, a little bit about you and then we can dive right into the recipe. Okay. Um, yeah, that's ceviche from last time. Wow. <laughs> that was so good. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm Morgan Avery. I live in New Hampshire right now, and uh, we've had a lot of, like, super hot summer days in a row, and then now today it's, like, 60 and kind of cool, and I'm glad because I don't have AC in my house, so okay. I'm not going to be, like, dripping in sweat while we make this together. Um, but yeah, I do the same, I do the same thing as you do, but up here I have meal prep clients and I love, um, making plant-based recipes, all about like simple, like making things really accessible. And I think that this recipe is a really good example of my philosophy around cooking. Um, and I love that there, it's a, it's a Buddha bowl, so we have all these different components and you can reuse them in other things. It's not like you have to make always the whole recipe at once. Like yesterday I had a salad with this dressing on it and it was delicious. So, um, yeah, should we just... I, think, I love this recipe that you picked this recipe too because I feel like it's so similar but also so different than the kind of recipes I create to where like you can look at it and think, oh my gosh, that is so many ingredients. But if you yeah. really read through it, you realize it's just duplicate. Um, you're using the tamari in multiple steps and you're using a lot of the same ingredients. So it can feel overwhelming, but then once you actually make the recipe or watch like one of us do it, you realize how simple it is. And I think that a lot of times people get so intimidated by how pretty the food looks or how many, you know, words are on the page and um, it actually isn't that complicated at all. So I love, um, I love that you chose this recipe and can't wait to try it. I know when I, I like when you see, like I was going to say, when you see the list of ingredients, it seems like a lot, but like what I did was just, it's like, okay, here's what you do for the tofu. Here's what you do for this. Here's what you do for that. And then it, it still looks like a lot, but it's really not. And yes. you'll see that as we make it. Um, cause so it's easy. I'm all about easy. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not yeah. about like spending hours in the kitchen. Right. What's yeah. that? Um, so for anyone who's tuning in live, if you guys have questions along the way, I will be kind of monitoring that. So Morgan, don't worry about paying attention to the chat. If someone has a question, I'll just pop in and ask it for them. Um, so for those of you who are tuning in, please ask away and let us know any questions you have. Um, so you ready to get started? Yeah. You good? Yeah, let's do it. It okay. keeps freezing, so hopefully it looks good for everyone watching. Um, does it look okay for you? I am for both of us. Um, but we will um, we'll monitor that as we go. So for you guys tuning in to let us know if it freezes on you and we'll try and adjust. Okay. Ready right. to cook? I'm ready. <laughs> okay. So the first thing, um, the bottom of the Buddha bowl, like the base is a grain. So on the recipe, I put wild rice. Today I used brown rice. Um, so that was what I already did. So I have the brown rice in the instant pot already good to go. Cool. I have leftover quinoa. I'm going to use. Oh my gosh. I was thinking about using quinoa. <laughs> um, and then the other thing, and cause I know you and I, since we do this for our jobs, it's all about efficiency. So it's like, get the thing in the instant pot first, do multiple things at once. So also I have the oven preheated to 400. Cool. And so the first thing we're going to do is um, make the tofu so that we can throw it in the oven while we assemble and make the rest of it. So, I need a bowl. <laughs> okay, so this is my favorite way to use tofu. And I know a lot of people are, like, iffy around tofu. Hey, we have matching bowls. Um, and 
I swear this is the best way to eat tofu. So even if you don't necessarily like it or you've had it before and you weren't really a fan, like maybe give this a try because it it's it comes out like crumbled and golden and kind of crispy and not spongy at all. And I love it. So I, um, I have baked tofu. Honestly, I am so embarrassed to say this, but I had not baked tofu until a few weeks ago. And you're right, it is game changing in terms of the texture. It holds so much shape and has such a meatier uh, consistency to it. So even people who aren't vegan or, or vegetarian, I think would love this recipe just the way it is. I think so too. And even like on that picture that we shared of the bowl, um, it looks like chicken. It looks like crumbled chicken. And um, yeah, you'll see. It'll be great. Plus, I mean, the most important thing, I think, is that this is the easiest, I think it's the easiest way to make tofu because normally you would want to um, kind of like slice it and then press it in between towels or there are like tofu presses that exist yeah. too. Um, but this one, because you crumble it up so small and then bake it, it loses the moisture and it still has all this flavor on it. So you, it's just like, it skips a step, which is always a good thing in my book. I love it. Okay. So yeah. It. yeah. So we have two packages of firm tofu. This is, this is the same brand, different, but um, this is a local one, which I love. And local I to me. Tofu, um, it, especially if I'm getting one that's not locally sourced. Soybeans are one of the top genetically modified foods in the U.S. So anytime you buy organic, you're automatically covering your bases to know that it's not genetically modified. So when in doubt, go organic. Yeah, exactly. And I find that most of the tofu usually is, or at least I found that like at stores around here, yeah. but. Yeah, you know, because there's, there's so many misconceptions around soy, too, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that soy, like, GMO soy is in so many of those processed foods, but, like, tofu, like, people, healthy people have been eating tofu for yeah. centuries. Yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty minimally processed compared to all the other junk. Um, so, anyway, so we're just going to take the cubes and just use your fingers and... Just kind of crumble it into like bite size, bite size pieces. So kind of like a chunky taco mix. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, and some will be bigger and some will be smaller, and that's totally fine because they'll cook differently. And then some will be more crispy and some will be a little more chewy. Can you freeze tofu? You know, I haven't done that, but I've heard that when you freeze tofu, it comes, it actually makes it more, like, um, meatier in texture, huh. and I haven't tried that yet, but I've heard, like, I've heard, I've seen recipes for, um, like, tofu nuggets, and they would freeze the tofu, I think it was almost twice, freeze it, let it defrost, freeze it again, and then, like, bread it and bake it, and that it, it takes on, um gets kind of like that shredded, like, I don't know what the word, striated, maybe? Uh-huh. So that's... When you freeze things, typically it kind of, like, removes... It brings the water to the surface. So then when you defrost it, it'd be a lot easier to get that extra liquid out. So that makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. I really want to try that, actually. Okay. My tofu is crumbled. Get All right, I'm just steps behind you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so big old bowl of crumbled tofu. Um, so to marinate it, we're just adding a few of our basic ingredients, which is um, four tablespoons of tamari and I don't know about you, but I don't measure. I like eyeball everything. <laughs> so gonna, yeah, I don't even. And it's so fun. Anything, which is so bad, but I hate measuring. <laughs> That's why I'm not very good at baking, because <laughs> yeah. it has to be precise. But cooking, it's it's whatever. So this is about four tablespoons of tamari. 
And you could also use, I'm using coconut aminos because I didn't have yeah. tamari. So um, you could use that too. And for those of you who do like to measure, four tablespoons is equal to a fourth a cup. So just a little yeah. convenient. Habit. And since you have um, the coconut aminos, Yes. Those are a little bit sweet, or actually it's sweeter than the tamari. Uh -huh. So you might like, it's up to you, but you might skip the maple because it might not need that extra little bit of sweetness. Yeah. I'll just but, like half the amount. Yeah. Um, okay. So then we're doing a couple of tablespoons of sriracha sauce. Okay. Just for like a little spice, a little flavor. And then um, a tablespoon of maple. Yeah, Which no. is, I think, both of ours preferred sweetener to use. And that's literally it. And then we mix it up. Oh, and garlic powder. Okay. Can't forget garlic powder. No, you need it. <laughs> so just a teaspoon of that or so. Just a little shake. And this, like, this is the, this is a perfect example of just eyeballing things and not measuring because just, you know, if you like it spicy, you can add a little more spice. If you like it really garlicky, you can add a little more of that. And if you mix it up and it's not coated, you can just add a splash more. It's, it's easy to just kind of like roll with it. For spices, I do put it in my hand before I dump it into the bowl. Cause sometimes it'll be like caked up and then it, you yeah. accidentally add like half the bottle and you don't mean to. So if you are eyeballing, pour it into your hand and then you make sure you get the amount you want. Yeah. Plus, I always tell people like um, in a cooking lesson or something, if you start doing that, if you take like to avoid, um, I hardly ever use these. <laughs> but yeah. in the beginning, what I would do would be like I would measure a teaspoon, put it in my hand and get familiar with what it looked like. And then now I know, now my hand is my measuring spoon, and now I know what a quarter teaspoon looks like, what half a teaspoon looks like, and I don't have to measure anymore. That's a great idea. But you know, I have them just in case. So, yeah, so we're just mixing it up and getting it fully coated, and then um, spreading it out on a baking sheet, which you're already ahead of me. Always use parchment paper. I grew up using aluminum foil, like my favorite. and then, you know, when I got more into health and wellness, just because little pieces of the aluminum can stick to the food, and then that gets into your body, and we don't want that. Yeah. I love the parchment paper, because you can, like, when you're... <laughs> When you're tossing stuff around, you can actually like lift the edges to shake it and convenient. Okay, so I'm gonna spread this out. Thank you. This person smells so good. Yeah. I mean, tamari, maple, I mean, that's just a good combination. For sure. For a lot of things. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we're throwing that in the oven at 400. I'll usually, I don't know what I wrote on the official recipe for baking time. I usually will set a timer for like 15 or 20 and then check on it. Yeah, 20 to 30 minutes. We'll just let it go in there for until we're done and then we can pull it out and make the bowl. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we got that covered. Um, I'm going to show you, because I have everything else already mostly prepped. Okay. So let's see if I can make this work. <laughs> um, we've got <laughs> the broccoli, almonds. We're going to use these utensils. We don't have to, but I like them. Um, I have the onion already chopped so that I don't cry on film. <laughs> uh, <laughs> some kale. Set up for me. I haven't chopped mine yet. Oh, okay. Well, you, you know what? Because you always do the knife, the knife skills. So yeah. I can I'll let you take that one. 
Are we making the filling next with the veggies? Um, and the pan? No, we'll, ma we'll make the dressing next. I guess I was just kind of okay. like showing what I've got here, yeah. Cool. Uh, and then the kale is, I just washed it and then um, whoop, tore it up into pieces. And I've got a carrot ready and then all those ingredients. But anyway, I just wanted to show like we do mise en place, which basically translates to everything in place. So before we start cooking, um, we have things kind of ready to go so that we're not scrambling mid cooking. Yeah. So it's yeah. so helpful. Like I'm all about yeah. steps, but when you're cooking, walking back and forth from your station to the fridge to the pantry, it just it starts to get overwhelming and it makes it feel more complicated than it needs to be. Totally. Also, one time I was making a soup and I was scrambling to like get things in there because it was cooking and it was hot and I was like, I gotta get the pepper in and I cut myself really bad. So <laughs> that was that was like a long time ago. But after that, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna have everything ready so that I'm not cutting vegetables with a sharp knife in a rush. That's not good. Yeah. Or like burning onion on the stove while, while you're waiting for other things to get prepped and it's just way easier. Way easier. Um, okay, so we're gonna make dressing now. And this is a almond butter curry recipe or almond butter curry dressing. And um, I'm glad, okay, so I saw the other day that you got the Nutribullet, which I used to have. <laughs> I love yeah. it, I've been using it every Honestly, so I've been, because I have my Blendtec, after my Nutribullet died, I got the Blendtec, and it was my, up, it was an upgrade, obviously, and then I really missed having that small container for dressings, yeah. um, but it's great, because you're going to do it that way, and I'm going to do it this way. Oh, cool. Awesome. So I'm going to do this little silicone cup and an immersion blender, so that shows that, I guess, two ways to do it. Yeah, and um, I feel like I always get questions about how to use the immersion blender. Like, it's a tool people know they should have, but they never use. So I love that you're doing it with the immersion blender. Cool. <laughs> There's a lot of tools that people have and don't use that I'm like, you've got to take your Instant Pot out of your closet that you haven't opened since last Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a big one. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna start with almond butter and we're gonna use about a third a cup of almond butter. Okay. Do you recommend, is this enough sauce? I mean, I'm sure it is for six servings, but if someone really loves like saucy food, should they maybe make a little extra? Hmm. Or do you use it for a dressing or how long will it stay good in the fridge? Um, it'll stay good for at least a week, probably maybe a little longer. Do the do the smell and the taste test, of course, but um, yeah, it'll last. It's got lemon in it, I think, which helps preserve it. Yeah. And yes, make extra. Always make extra. <laughs> Big fan of always making. If you have what's that? You could freeze it if you have lemon. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I think so. Again, haven't haven't tried, but. In theory, maybe. Okay, so a third cup of almond butter. Yep. I have a feeling I'll be able to like stick a straw in my blender cup and drink it. It's gonna be so good. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, same. Same. Been there. Maybe not quite a straw, but I'll stand here and just like dip broccoli in it and I could eat it all day. Okay, <laughs> a third a cup almond butter and then we're gonna do the same tamari and maple. So two tablespoons of tamari. And by the way, tamari is, for people watching, it's soy sauce essentially, but it's the more like pure form of soy sauce. Um, and it, like this one, I get the gluten-free. So if you're gluten-free, you can have it, but regular soy sauce usually has gluten in it. Right. Okay, and then we're gonna do 
um, a tablespoon of maple. Do you find that a lot of your clients, when you do cooking lessons or cooking classes, that they're really tied to <clears throat> exact measurements? Yes. And you're always like, no, it's fine. Just flow with it. <laughs> I try to break them out of it. I love it when I do Same. a cooking class client and we do a series of cooking classes because it's so fun to watch them in the first one and then the last one, like maybe five or six classes in, and they're so much more comfortable with the knife, so much more comfortable with like eyeballing ingredients, and they really don't have their confidence. And Yes. I used to be one of those people that had to follow a recipe to a T. And I would be so jealous of my mom because she could just eyeball and add things. And it would always taste so good. And I never trusted myself to deviate. <laughs> and then somewhere along the way, that kind of switched. And I built up some confidence. And um, I realized that, the, I mean, recipes is really more like, formulas and once you understand that you're never going to have like you're never going to have some crazy amount of cumin in a recipe or you know you kind of understand like the amount and ratios and once you understand that then you have kind of a better foundation to work off of too yeah i always say the same thing like formulas formula instead of recipe because Every recipe is just a reflection of the person who created the recipe and what they like, but you're different. So you could switch yeah. things up. And it's funny because I, I kind of went the opposite way. I never liked recipes, but that was what deterred me from cooking. Like I didn't like following the rules. And yeah. so I started, when I started cooking, it was cooking from scratch, mm -hmm. but it was horrible. So I had to learn <laughs> like, like the... <laughs> Yeah, I, and I learned just through, like, doing it, and then I was like, oh, okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so we've got almond butter. Yeah, almond butter, tamari, maple, and we're going to do juice from a lemon. Ooh, water, good idea. Okay, so juice, juice from one lemon, yeah. And I love using, you don't have to, but I love using these things. I know, me too. I'm just too lazy to pull mine out. <laughs> it's, it's, either way, it's about laziness, because I'm too lazy to, like, pick out seeds. <laughs> <laughs> well, I figure I don't really want to move, so I already have everything <laughs> set up. And I, I don't, if I don't have to, then I'm not going to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can already smell the tofu, and it smells so good. Mm. Yeah, I'm pretty excited that I'm going to be able to eat off of this for a few days. Well, I saw you post about eating the dressing yesterday, and I thought, she's making a whole other batch tomorrow. Is she going to be tired of it? <laughs> no, I had, like, this much left over from last week, and yeah. it was perfect. Yeah. Um, okay, then we're going to do one clove of garlic. Okay. So I just smash it. You could actually even make this recipe without um, blending it at all and just like grate the garlic so that it's really small in there, but we're going to blend it either way. So I'm just going to like roughly chop it and then... Blend. My probably one of, if not the most used, most beloved kitchen tool. Yeah, totally. Um, and we're gonna use it right now for some ginger. Okay. We're gonna use a teaspoon of ginger of grated ginger. So it'll probably be like about an inch of this. Um, and this is a fun little learning opportunity. So for ginger, if you, I used to cut it always with a knife, but I would end up losing a lot of the, cutting off the skin, I would lose a lot of the ginger. And then I learned that you can use a spoon to yeah. scrape the, let's see, I don't know if I'm coming in clear. 
and it comes off really easily and it just takes that little outer layer and yeah that's a fun one to show people because they're like oh my gosh yeah, I never use good. ginger because it's hard to peel so if I'm blending it up do I need to grate it or will it be okay if I just kind of chop it up and put it in my blender cup um, I prefer to grate it because it, okay. a lot of times it is so um, stringy and like fibrous that yeah. sometimes those fibers won't blend all the way. Sometimes they will, but sometimes they don't and I'd rather have them go away. So yeah, okay. we're grating it. It would probably blend if you chopped it up at least a little bit. Yeah. But. I mean, oh, fresh ginger is just so good. But if you but if you don't have it, there's always a way. And also, I mean, the dressing would be good without ginger at all. Like if you're not a ginger person, totally fine. Okay. Is that everything? Oh, curry powder, duh. <laughs> so I already have it in this little dish. Okay. Um I think I have this is a tape or a teaspoon. I think I went a little heavy, but I really like the curry. If you're not so fond of it, just do a little less. So there's so many different kinds of curry powders out there. Um, what is your I don't know. I just go, I just find the, I go, okay, so I go to like. And it's just plain like curry. Yeah, that's usually what I find as well. Um, just, yeah, just like a yellow curry powder that's okay. turmeric based. Um, yeah. I get mine at the health food store nearby where, and I do like the, you put it in a bag and weigh it yourself. So I don't know what the label looks like. Yeah. I know that I've gotten like Baltic curry before and there's some different in flavor infusion with the curry. So probably whatever people had on hand would be fine. Yeah, I don't know. I've Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of different kinds, but they sound interesting. I want to try. Because then there's like Thai curry, but that's right. usually a paste. So right. um, yeah, this is this is an Indian curry powder. I guess we should say that. Um, so I'm going to do this and you're going to do that. <laughs> okay. Let's go. How's yours looking? So good. You I wanted to, it, I just realized too, depending on what kind of almond butter you have and like how juicy the lemon is, it could be thicker or thinner. Yeah. Um, so like a runny almond butter works really well, but if it's too thick, you can always just add a tablespoon or two of water and just blend yeah, it up. I think I might do that because mine, for those of you watching, it's sticking. Oh yeah. So, and it will thicken when it chills. So you yeah. want it to be more thin. Yeah, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more water too. Could also add a little more lemon for more. Yeah, I think that's perfect. Same. Mmm, yum. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm gonna have to have to seriously practice portion control with this bowl. It smells so good. I know, I wish you guys could smell this through the screen. <laughs> well, so I'm just gonna pour it. it. I just have to make it. 
Yeah, you have to make it. Even if you don't make the whole bowl, you must put this dressing in your arsenal. Next time your dad or you <laughs> has that salad with banana, I really want to see a picture of it because I'm my <laughs> mind is just still trying to wrap around that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Baby. Oh. Alright. So yeah, I think that made this is about a cup of dressing. So yeah, for sure. Mm. Okay, now I smell the tofu. It smells good. Okay, so are we that thing is just prepping the veggies, right? Yeah. Okay, do you want me to go over knife skills real quick? Perfect. <laughs> okay. So um, in all of my classes, I always like to talk about how to hold a knife because it is such a game changer in my cooking. Oh, real quick, I wanted to address this question. A little bit of yeah. pressed red pepper would be so good, right? Yeah, be delicious. Yeah, I mean, good idea. Um, by the way, he is the best knife sharpener in Orlando. I had him oh. in the house and he sharpened like 30 of my knives. It was the best. <laughs> All of my knives were cooking class. Well, I need to do that. Does, yeah. Do you come to New Hampshire? <laughs> right? I know. We should do like a little road trip. Um, yeah. Okay, so talking about knife skills, um, I always have to talk about how to hold a knife. So I always say that holding a knife is a little bit like holding your pencil. We were all taught one way, but we all end up holding it a little bit differently. But the goal is just to get a good, firm grip on your knife so that you're using the strength of your entire forearm versus if you hold the knife way back on the handle, then you're relying too much on your wrist and your knife can slip and slide. So you want to get a good, firm grip and actually hold a part of the knife. So the way that I hold my knife is gripping it with my thumb and my finger, and then kind of yeah. wrapping, yeah, my remaining three fingers around. Some knives have a little groove right here that makes it a little bit more awkward to hold it that way. Um, but either way, the goal is just to get a good firm grip um, and then practicing the clock. So that way your fingertips aren't exposed and instead wrapping your fingertips under when you grip something so that your knife is always hitting up against your knuckles, never your fingertips. Um, so that's my little knife skill. And it is way better to have a sharp knife than a dull knife. A dull knife can prevent more injuries than having a sharp knife. So it's really key to keep your knife sharp and invest in a good quality knife. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and drop the mic. That's the problem. And I think a lot of people don't like cooking because their knives are dull. And it's a pain in the butt to use a dull knife. And it's it's actually kind of scary because you're more likely to hurt yourself. So totally. use a sharp knife. OK, so as you're talking through the steps, I'm going to go ahead and you have everything chopped. I don't. So I'm going to chop as you chop through next step. Does that work? OK. Did you want to chop the onion and show the onion or, or skip it? Yeah, I can do that. Um, so I just <laughs> chopped the onion. Let's pretend my onion is still whole. So there's two ends, the root end and the non-root end. You want to trim off the non-root end and then cut it in half to make it easier to peel the skin off of the outer layer. And then what you're going to do, you always want to chop with the flat surface on your board. You don't want to chop with something rolling around. So find your flat surface. And then what I do is I chop almost all the way through, but not all the way through the root. So you want to think of the root as being grounding. It's going to keep everything intact. So we're going to just make thin slices all the way around the onion. 
angling your knife as you work around the side so that you get even pieces. I, I see a lot of people, especially like post of cooking um, channel episodes where they will then take the knife and slice it horizontally. I don't ever do that. Because I find when you hold the knife, yeah, you don't have to. And it just creates a bigger mess than it does good. So I skip that step. And then you can turn it and just chop through and get nice, even-sized pieces of onion. And you aren't spending, like, five minutes trying to wipe your eyes and cut your onion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Even just holding this. That's a strong onion. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I never understood that horizontal slice because the onion has all those layers anyway so you don't even need it so forget that stuff <laughs> no, okay so we are um so basically we're in the last stage which is sauteing veggies super easy so we're just gonna heat a large saute pan um on high heat or like medium high or so so I'm going to put mine on about a seven, six or seven for medium high. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, like, I don't know, 75% or so. Okay. okay, so we are going to just use, you can do an oil saute or water. We're just, I'm just going to use like a tablespoon of oil, and then we'll actually add a little water in a bit, which will steam the veggies. So, I've got avocado oil. I know you talk about this too, but I usually, for cooking with high heat, I'm using either coconut oil or avocado oil, typically. Um, all right, so about a tablespoon in your pan. And we're gonna start with the onions and let those go first. Usually I want the pan to be like hot when I add food. It's pretty warm, but I probably would have waited another minute or so if I wasn't doing this live. <laughs> you don't, cause you don't, you'd rather it be underheated than too hot because if you add things when it's too hot, they'll burn really easily. So you can always turn the heat down or up. And if it is too hot when you add things to the pan, what I like to do, I just pull the pan off of the heat to get mm. that heat source um, off of the pan and then let it cool down a little bit and then I'll pull it back over on top of the burner. Once it's like settled yeah. down. Yeah, same. Same, same. Is that weird too? Like, I think that's the kind of thing no one taught us. We just learned through doing it over and over and realizing our little tricks in the kitchen. Yeah. Totally. Right. So, what so the do onion. We want our broccoli to be. Um, we're just going like florets, so just bite size. I'm I am no known for liking things small, so like this one's a bit big for me. Um, let's see, <laughs> this one is like ideal for me, just a little guy. But <laughs> yeah, just like cooking it right like we're not cooking it truly all the way through because it gets it gives it that little bit of bite and it's meal prep so we're reheating things which means they'll continue to cook exactly yeah so it'll still be a little crunchy probably um when we're done with it today because yeah like you said then you're going to reheat it again and <clears throat> it'll cook a little bit more so i just have the onions sauteing so just a little trick. I what I got the dino kale. Um, oh, I fun! A little bit better for sautéing because it doesn't take up so much room in my pan. Um, so the way that I like to get, you want to remove the leaves from this really fibrous um, stem. stem. Yeah. So I just pinch the bottom, and then you can take your fingers around the base and just pull it through and it automatically separates the leaves from the stem. Yep. What yeah, and then I took that 
And then I took those leaves and just tore them into pieces. Yes. Um, and I don't know about Deacon. Deacon is your dog, right? Yeah. I don't know about Deacon, but my dogs love these tail stems. <laughs> and they also love... Oh, really? My dogs love... Okay, so I always have, <laughs> like, this or some kind of container going for extra veggie scraps for my dogs. This is, um, like, some of the broccoli bone cut up. And then these kale stems, they love little pieces of carrot ends. And I, I guess that's it from here. They love it. My dogs eat raw ginger. Yeah, I always say that just because I think I'm going to make, like, a homemade stock or something. And then most of the time I don't. So um, I love that idea of giving it to the dog. He's already, like, mostly plant-based because of all the scraps that fall into my floor or veggies. Yeah. So I'm sure it'll yeah. Yeah, I cut them up really small, and then I usually just mix it into their food. And then, actually, while we're on the topic, I emptied my almond butter jar, so I saved these and let the dogs lick them. The plastic ones, you got to watch them, but, um, yeah, they love it. Yeah. <laughs> I always have a collection of, like, peanut butter jars and tahini I and all that. I gave him one last night, and he was so happy. <laughs> Aw. All right, the onions are sizzling. Yeah, if they look like they're burning, <clears throat> just turn it down. We want them to soften and then maybe get, like, a little bit of that golden caramelized look. But definitely we don't want them burning. So when we add the water to the pan with the veggies, are you putting the lid on to kind of steam it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're almost there. I'm just waiting for the onions to get like a little bit more caramelized. I'm gonna check on the tofu. Okay. So for my carrot, I know we're not cooking the carrot, but I am going to peel it and then use my peeler to make carrot ribbon. Perfect. Right. Yeah, and I'll show you what I'm doing with the julienne. So this is the tofu after however long it's been. Um, so I'm just gonna like toss it around and put it back in. And I kind of like the parchment because we can do that. But. Caramely. We're going to add the broccoli. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to add the broccoli first and let that steam a little. So I'm going to add the broccoli in the pan with a splash of water. It's so like a tablespoon or two of water and stick the lid on it and let the broccoli steam. And then we'll add the kale and do the same thing. And that's it. <laughs> oh, and a little pinch of salt. Easy. Okay. I'm going to mix it up first with the onions. I need to turn my heat down a little bit. All right, so just adding a splash of water in the pan and put the lid on. And then I'll, I'll do the carrot too. So, um, 
This is a huge carrot. <laughs> this is a julienne peeler. So on one side, it's a regular peeler. And then on the other side, it makes, it has these little ridges and it makes noodles. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna do that. Let's see if I can do this over here. All right. I love this thing. And I, as long as my carrots are organic or they're coming from like a local farm, I just leave the skin right on because the skin is really good for you. Yeah, I do the same thing with potatoes. I mean, I mm -hmm. really, other than beef, like if it has a really tough skin, I really don't peel a whole lot unless I'm going for, like if I'm catering an event and I'm going for presentation. Exactly. Um, there's so much nutrients in the skin. Yeah, exactly. So what's left of this will become dog scrap. <laughs> and here's what I here's what I ended up with. So all these beautiful carrot noodles. And this is what I use for a lot of like salads and um spring like uh vietnamese spring rolls yeah and if even sometimes it's easier than grating carrots i'll just julienne and then like chop this up and then you have grated carrots That's which you could totally use um in the recipe i put carrots you can grate them you can julienne them you can um ribbon slice them doesn't matter yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, so broccoli is steaming I'm gonna add the kale and about a teaspoon of salt and then mix it all up and put the lid back on. Okay, there we go. I'm measuring with my hand and a bunch of this salt just dumped into my hand. So glad I didn't do that over the pan. <laughs> and I always encourage people in cooking classes to season your food as you're cooking it. I get a lot yeah. of people ask, like, what's the difference between seasoning as you cook it and then just adding salt and pepper at the end? But when you season as you cook, it brings out all of the flavors of the food that you're cooking instead of adding, like, just a salt bomb on top of your food when you're ready to eat it. Exactly. And also with the with the brown rice or the quinoa or whatever grain you're using, I always add a little bit of salt in there when it cooks too, because you can't yeah. you can't replace the salt that like it that cooks into it afterwards. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna stick the lid on, and then we'll be good to build, right? What? I'm gonna grab my bowl, and then we'll be good to build, right? Yeah. Okay. Same. <laughs> So, well, I'm going to make a bowl and eat this for lunch because I'm really hungry. But like I said, or I don't know if I said that yet, but the recipe um, makes about six servings of a full bowl, a full meal prep container. So it works really well for meal prep. It works well for families. Um, yeah, about six servings, maybe even more because it is really filling. So I'm going to grab my brown rice out of my Instant Pot. Alright, so I just took the veggies, I turned off the heat and lifted the lid and they're done. Easy, okay. steamed. Cool. There's really nothing special about these veggies. What's going to make them special is this. <laughs> yeah, I'm so pumped. So All right, while so. we're um, finishing up and about to build the bowl, for those of you who tuned in and weren't cooking with us, you can find the recipe at sailorsweets.com, the full recipe, and then you can tune into the live and cook with us. And, um, yeah, and... You know where to find me. You can find Morgan at Morgan Avery Co. We've been tagging each other all day, and we'll probably keep doing so. Yeah. Um, so, okay. I'm, I'm good. You good to build the bowl? I literally can't wait. I'm so hungry. 
Okay, so I'm gonna start. I'm just gonna compartmentalize it. I'm gonna put some, or you can build it up. Does not matter. Um, I'm gonna do like a scoop of brown rice. About a cup for, actually that seems like a lot for right now, but a scoop. Brown rice. I'm gonna add veggies. Yeah. <laughs> Is that your tofu? All right, so here for you guys is what the tofu looks like. Hang on a sec. Burn myself. Out of the oven, it is so golden, delicious, crumbly. And then you get these yummy little chunks. I think I'm blurry here, but so good. raisins you could use um craisins or anything i'm just gonna pop up some of these almonds really quick you could also put um if anyone is like nut free you could make the dressing with <laughs> with sun butter and you could add pepitas or sunflower seeds on top. All right, almonds are going on top. You could drink this stuff. It's liquid gold right here. Yeah, it's a good one. Some golden raisins. And then I'm just gonna drizzle dressing on top of here. Oh my gosh. I gotta get this. I got you guys gotta see this. We have one minute left. <gasps> oh my gosh. Guys, can you see? <gasps> I can't tilt it because it'll slide off. I know. Maybe I can tilt my phone. <laughs> Yummy. And what I love too, our plates or our bowls look different. So it just shows yeah. that like this is yours like make it yours make it look however you want there is no one right way um, no you could actually you could actually do more like raw veggies and make it more of a salad add some fresh greens in there that would be delicious too yeah or you could do like a slaw kind of situation with raw veggies and coat it and it would just get like better over the mm -hmm. course of a few days too totally oh my gosh this dressing this dressing, if you mix it up with like, like broccoli and carrot slaw, oh my gosh, it would be so good. Mm, so good. Um, okay, in our last minute, I just wanted to thank you again for sharing this recipe. It might be my favorite recipe on the blog, and it's not even mine. Um, <laughs> it is so good. You guys have to make it. Go check it out on fitlemeeats.com. And... Um, Follow Morgan for more recipes like this one and more inspiration at Morgan Avery Co. Thank you, Morgan, so much for tuning in and showing everyone how to cook this delicious Buddha bowl. I'm so pumped Thank for you to try it. And um, yeah, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. And until next time, happy cooking. Mm -hmm.